Hi. Welcome to this episode of Dungeon Dives, where we'll be delving into the spooky haunted wizard castle of Karazhan. If you're looking for a specific boss, check the description or the timecode below. Mm -hmm. Karazhan is the first raid players will be delving into in the Burning Crusade. Yeah. It's a 10 player instance, and you should bring yeah, two dude. tanks, two healers, and the rest DPS. There is an attunement process for Karazhan, and it's a very, very long one. This video isn't about the attunement process. No, chain, the other one so just I'll was. Make it quick. <gasps> First, you're gonna head to Deadwood Pass and speak to this guy outside of Karazan, and then you're gonna kill some ghosts, then you're gonna go to the Dalaran Crater, then you're gonna go to Khadgar, then you're gonna pick up a quest called Entry into Karazan. Then you're gonna get the best of calls, and you're gonna get the Shadow Labyrinth key, then you're gonna run Shadow Labs, once you do that, then you're gonna have to go to the Steam Vault, and then you're gonna have to run Alcatraz, then you're gonna have to make sure that you're tuned for the Black Rass as well, and you're gonna have to return to Khadgar, and then you'll finally receive your Master's key. If that was too fast for you, I'm just okay. gonna leave a guide in the description of this that video. That was way faster than the Mad Season video, damn. Holy shit, we should just watch that. Wow! Okay, now that your whole raid is attuned, we can mm -hmm. enter the Haunted Tower of Karazan. Karazan is a raid filled with optional bosses. Mm -hmm. The only ones that you need to kill to get to the last boss are going to be these. But of course, really? I will be covering all of the wow. optional bosses as well. I didn't even starting know. With Holy shit. Head left and clear out these ghostly horses. Damn, that's crazy. And focus down their stable hands first, because they're going to have a variety of nasty spells you just don't want to deal with. Clear out yeah. all of this trash before facing attunement. Attack the steed of the huntsman. Come, Midnight. Let's start with this petty will be on his steed called Midnight. Deal yep. damage to him until he gets 95% health, and he'll get off Midnight. One tank will hold Attunement, and the other one will hold Midnight. Attunement can be disarmed, so if you have a warrior tank, really? you'll want them to tank him. Your oh, raid wow. will continue focusing DPS on Midnight. Players in your raid will be affected by a curse called Intangible Presence, which lowers their chance to hit and should yeah, be I didn't cursed. know any of this when shit. When Midnight gets a 25% health, a Toonman will mount back up on his steed and threat will be wiped. So DPS, be careful here. During this phase, this the main guy drops him out, face by the, the boss away from everyone, and the rest of the raid will stack on Midnight's butt to avoid the charge ability the horse now has. Hey, huh. wow, congrats, you just killed the easiest boss in the raid. Oh, always new. Someday I would become. Wait, he didn't show the mount. Oh, there it is. You can There's clear the out these ads next to this boss and speak to this. That's crazy. Like, I had no fucking idea about any of that shit. Like, whenever we killed him back in the day, I was dog shit at the game. So I was like, oh, we just attacked this guy. It's about it. Like, I never thought about it at all. And, like, whenever we did it on the beta, we just steamrolled it. I didn't even know he had these mechanics, but I bet whenever we do this uh, for real on like live servers, it's going to be more challenging because we're not going to have optimized gear like what we were given in beta. Blacksmith called Corin. If you're honored with the Violet Eye, the rep associated yeah. with Karazan, then you, you, can, can, repair you can repair your gear here. Exactly. Okay, backtrack to the Very entrance, useful. head up the stairs, carefully pull an AoE down these phantom guest packs, yeah. and head to the left to face the next boss, Morose. Hmm. Unannounced visitors. Preparations must be made. I hated this boss. Rose is pulled with four separate ads. Yeah. And out of all these four ads, there's six possible ads that can be these four ads, if that makes any sense. So basically, every time you fight Morose, there's a chance that there will be a different combination of ads. You can CC these ads if you're lacking DPS just or healing, but on the TBC beta, pretty much every raid group I saw just went, Ha ha ha, DPS go burr, and killed them all pretty easily, but also at the same time, if you're in questing greens, it doesn't hurt it's, to be safe. Yeah, it's a different You're universe. gonna kill Moro's last. Every 30 seconds, Moro's gonna be a lot harder. and garrot someone, which means he's gonna put a bleed on them, <laughs> and they'll continually take damage all throughout the fight. He also has a gouge and a blind, like any other good rogue. He'll use gouge on the tank, so you'll want an off tank to pick him up when this happens. This is a pretty easy fight, just make sure your raid is on the same page when it comes to kill priority and CC assignments, and- I wonder how hard this is gonna be on week one. Like, that's what I'm curious about, is like, what is this gonna be like on the first week of the game? And I, I wonder if it's still just gonna be a joke. Because it could be, like, yeah, it, I think it'll be kinda hard. I actually think it'll be kinda hard, because people have like green gear, like questing shit from like 65, but, like, another factor that, like, people might not remember is that Nax gear was really good back then. Like, Nax gear, even at level 70, was really good. So, even if you don't have, like, bad gear, yeah, that's true. They don't really, yeah, they're not going to have green gear. They're going to have fucking Nax gear. It, like, there's going to be people, there's going to be, like, raids in Karazhan that are going to have two people with Atiesh. This boss should be dead. How terribly clumsy of me. Hey Q, get you 68 while questing? Yeah, Head yeah. Head back to the ballroom. Take the door on the left. Head up the stairs. Take the door on the right. Good guilds Move down the hallway. I agree. Filled with... 
a bunch of concubines like like there's just a bunch of sexy ladies here <laughs> and the weird thing is this isn't the only tbc ray that just has a room full of sexy ladies i was back in the good old days boys where we used to be able to objectify women oh man those were the days boys those were the days the black temple has this too who at blizzard in 2007 was this horny they needed your behavior will Jeff not Kaplan. be tolerated your whole raid <laughs> is going to need to stand around in a circle around the boss. This you know, is because take she cast a Holy Wrath spell that connects to players and deals yeah, more I damage wonder who to it the is. more players it connects to. So just, you don't want to be bunched up. Be careful uh -huh. not to stand too far back because you can break line of sight with your healers. Well, She'll cast that. a Holy Fire on a random member of the raid that does big damage and needs to be dispelled. Throughout this whole fight, she'll have a consecration like AoE effect. Below yeah, you just her. take damage. And if you stand in it, you will be silenced for one second and oh. continually take damage. I didn't know what but silence. But this consecration you. thing is a very important asset to killing her. So it breaks because the, she will uh, also cast repentance on your raid, yeah. which will stun everyone in your raid for 12 seconds and breaks when you take damage. So players in you your raid will need to in stand it. in the AoE damage that hurts them to yep. break them out of the repentance stun. Of course she so does a huge explosion. run into the AoE a couple of seconds before the ability is casted. Now the stupid simple way to do this is just to have the tank drag the boss over the people that are stunned to break them out instead. Just manage repentance well and the I'm boss. actually glad he gave that example. I, did, I forgot all about that. That's a smart idea. This will be dead. Oh. Oh. Easy boss. Easy fucking boss. Easiest boss in my life. I used to have those gloves. Uh, Backtrack and take it right out the door and hold right. While heading to the next boss, you'll have to face these spectral performers that you'll need to focus down first. They have a sleep, they deal AoE damage on death, and they summon a spotlight that you need to move them out of. You but can stand if you in stand it. in yeah. the spotlight, you'll deal increased damage. The next boss is the opera event. There are three possible bosses you can face here, and Shh. oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to oh, this dear. evening's presentation. Tonight, we explore a tale a of forbidden love. forbidden love. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? I've done this so Julian many times, first. man. She has a heal. I used to have to do this so many times. You needed to spell the buff on her that increases her damage and casting speed. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy! Wait a second, I just realized. They had Romeo and, like, Romeo and Juliet, and then whenever they redid the dungeon, they had a dude and a murloc. Like, they fucking, they redid it as, as fucking West Side Story. Uh, what, what, what's a West Side Story? W was there a murloc in West Side? Yeah, right. Next, you'll fight Romeo, who is very, very similar. <laughs> Just face him away from your raid. He will apply a stacking poison that it's needs not to be that cleansed. Hard. Uh, dispel his damage and attack speed increase. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's pretty much like it. the other boss. Yeah. During phase three, you'll fight both of them at the same time, Interrupt and the they heel. need to die ten seconds between each other. Have your melee focus Julianne, this is and actually your range really good focus video. Romulo. Here's the unique loot they will drop. Wow. Dude, that vial was so Tonight, good, man. We and the sword the was good, too. Of the human soul as we join a lost, <laughs> lonely girl trying desperately with the help of her loyal companions to find her way home. Oh dear, we simply must find a way oh, home. Geez. The old wizard could be our only hope. Strawman, Roar, Tinhead, will you? Wait, oh golly, look, we have visitors. During this play, you'll fight four bosses at the same time. Dorothy will be your first kill priority. She cannot be tanked and just cast water bolts at random players of your raid. She will do an AoE fear and summon her dog named Tito. Make sure you kill Dorothy before killing Tito, because if Tito dies before she does, she will enrage. Tito himself will silence enemies. Roar does That's an good. AoE fear, but That's also great. is susceptible to fear. So yeah. warlocks can fear him, and hunters can use scare beast. Fun fact, despite Roar being a beast, he still cannot be hibernated. Strawman has a stun, but gets disoriented when taking fire damage, so... He's a total joke of a boss. Tinhead is the boss you I really want. do feel like Karazhan was like one of the best raids Blizzard's ever made. I, I do. I feel like it's one of the coolest and best raids Blizzard's ever come out with, man. It's like one of those things where there were so many cool ideas put into it, and it feels like they were really passionate about putting it together. There's like a few other raids that are like that too, but I think Karazhan definitely stands out.
Top three, and yeah, main it's, tank to have it's a off. great raid. He has a cleave, and he will do some pretty chunky damage, mm -hmm. but as the fight progresses, he will start to rust and move very, very slowly, so your tank can easily kite him. Once all it's four bosses are dead, you'll fight the Chrome. She does like tornadoes, tornadoes yeah. you should not stand in. Yeah. And has a chain lightning spell. Yeah. And she's very, very easy. Here's the unique loot they will draw. Tonight, things are not. I remember I ninja looted those slippers in Burning Crusade, or I like looted them myself. I forgot what it was. So I could have two Hearthstones. And I never realized that they shared cooldown. And so I just had like this pair of fucking cloth slippers in my bags for like a week because i felt stupid for it but they seem for tonight your eyes may not be trusted this is my favorite one because it was easy lastly it's time for the big bad wolf yeah this is so they easy we fear every 30 seconds and a stun a random yep. player of your raid is going to be turned into little red riding hood and the lose. wolf will fixate on i think them. they lose all their armor away, little girl. Run yeah away. and then like you have to run away from them. <laughs> He, he said it. <laughs> they will need to run around the perimeter of the stage to not get caught. Yeah. While this player is running for their lives, you'll want your he tank to thing. follow the wolf and continue generating threat. I forgot that's where it's actually Here's from. Here's the unique loot the wolf drops. That gun finally, was really here good. Here's all the loot all of these bosses can drop. I used to have the helmet. To yeah, get to the dude. next boss, just head up these ramps, kill these ghostly philanthropists first because they will buff the other trash. Keep moving until you get to the I wonder if they're going to drop a ton of gold. Back in uh, in TBC, they used to drop like 250 gold. Each one would drop 250 gold. Or something like this, like 100, I don't know. I, I remember 250. And I wonder if Blizzard's going to have that in the game for TBC. Because there would just be so much fucking exploiting. It'd be, yeah, yeah, Mr. Beasts. Yeah, exactly. The gold run in Classic. Yeah, yeah, you would do gold runs. And then also in Wrath, at the beginning of Wrath, hunters would be, there would be bot hunters that were programmed to farm those mobs. The spooky section of the raid. Here, there is a side entrance to the instance. So if you wipe, you can respawn by running back here and gold instead. Upgrade. Oh, true. You can only use this side entrance if you have defeated the opera event. The next boss oh, we are going to that. talk about is Nightbane. Damn. Now, this is the most difficult oh, fight in the instance. That is more difficult than the last boss. Thankfully, uh, he's optional. A lot of raid groups will wait till the end of their run to kill him. Is but it? I'm doing these bosses in order, and nobody can stop me, so I'm explaining him now. I don't in order know. To summon Nightbane, a member of your raid is, is it really to that hard? A quest chain. In order to start this quest chain, you're going to need to be honored with the Violet Eye. And instead it's of going into this, I'm just going to leave another guide in the video description. Okay, there it is. There's Ragnaros. Okay, so the actual boss fight. Yeah, Night how do you Bane do it? Has it's a two debuff, phases, right? A ground phase and a flight air. phase. Yeah. First, let's talk about the ground phase. Nightbane is like any other dragon. Don't stand in front of him. Don't, Don't stand, stand behind, behind him. He'll cast an AoE fear that can be outranged, and yep. he will also apply a dot that reduces chance to hit I puts that a needs to be dispelled. You. The so important ability for this phase is Charred Earth. He will select a random player of the raid and put a giant oh, AoE circle yeah. of death that they need to get out of. Have your have ranged drop in your raid stack up on top of each other right here. When Charred Earth then is they casted, move. just sidestep over here. Same yeah. thing for your melee group. At 75, 50, and 25% health, Night Bane oh, will man, transition I forgot all about his that. air phase, which is easily the hardest part of this fight. Everyone in your raid is going to stack together. He, he like, attacks you. will then cast an ability you. called Rain of Bones, which does yeah. AoE damage, so you want to spread back out. There's, like, a big ad you have to kill. Rain of Bones is going to summon restless Skeletons. Mm -hmm. The catch about these mobs is they can only take damage from physical and holy attacks. So, Rep Paladin That combined with a seriously high amount of damage they're going to be pumping mm -hmm. out and the immolation aura they have makes this the biggest challenge of Jesus. this fight. Seriously, if you have a raid comp that is heavy on caster DPS, a good chunk of your raid will be utterly useless when dealing with these skeletons. Wow. That being said, if you are a pro elite wow. hardcore certified gamer, you should have Stratholme Holy Water in your bags to deal damage oh. to them. During this phase- Dude, some that's so cool. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I love about games. Like, where you can use, like, stuff like holy water from the previous expansion. I still have, like, 50 holy water. I was cleaning out my bags yesterday in Classic, and I threw away 10 holy water. I feel kind of stupid after watching this video. But, um, I still do have 50 holy water left, so I should be okay.
Someone in your raid will be targeted by smoking blast and they'll continually take damage for 15 seconds. This is typically casted on a healer. Finally, make sure members of your raid don't run too far away from the rest of the group or they will be pelted by fireballs. That is the flight phase, and when Nightbane lands again, you're going to need to give your tank a moment to establish threat again, so hold on from DPSing him for a bit. So I thought that Nightbane only did the fear in the third phase. But maybe that's just a mechanic for the, uh, the, the, the fucking Legion version. Yeah, I remember he only did the fear in the last phase. It's every ground phase. Damn, that's nuts. Nightbane is one of those fights where I'd probably suggest having three healers instead of two because there's just always so bring three much healers. damage that goes uh, out. In my opinion, that always bring phase. three healers. And it's a really long fight. Yep. But if you have a good raid comp, this dragon should be defeated. That's a lot of damage going out. That's a dead ass bitch. I had those boots right there, and I also had. Let me get to the shield. I had the shield. And I also got the chest piece later on. I remember whenever we had our uh, our first tank get that shield, we were so happy because it was one thing like everybody liked this tank. We had raided with him like back in Don't Wow, and so once he got it, like it was like kind of a guild accomplishment. It was really cool, and also that shield, like even today, the shield of impenetrable darkness still actually has high quality uh, design on it. Like it actually is like way ahead of its time in terms of how good it looks. It's kind of like that one bow from, uh, it was like Legion Killer, I believe, it was from Archimonde. Super well designed. Dude, I can't- Keep dude, moving I, up the Twisted I Tower of to Karazhan, and I'm actually getting hyped. Archane Watchmen. They're gonna cast an like, Arcane I'm, I'm explosion excited, like effect man. on a random player of your this raid, is gonna be fun. and they need to run away from everyone. Clear out the groups of trash here in this hallway, and make yeah. some space to fight Curator. The Menagerie is for guests only. Curator is the DPS check of Karazam. It's Throughout the, the fight, he's going to summon Astral Flares. These are adds that will rapidly cast a chain lightning-like spell, and they need to be focused down as fast as possible. Yeah. If your raid can't keep up with these, you're going to be overwhelmed. Curator will also cast Hateful Bolt, which deals damage to the player with the second highest threat, aka your off tank. Aka your warrior, because your warrior is second on threat because he keeps pulling aggro because he's doing so much damage and then the hateful bolts make him take enough damage to where he gets full rage to kill the adds as soon as they fucking spawn that's what's going to happen that's what it's going to be and it's going it's going to be lit man it is going to be lit like i cannot wait for this dude like doing karazan with the, dude imagine doing karazan with the boys Lastly, oh, when man. Curator runs out of mana, he will go into his evocation phase, yeah. where he'll be stunned and his damage taken is increased by 200%. He spawns this is an the part ad at the same where you time. You want to pop Bloodlust and go as hard as possible. Yep. This is a pretty easy fight as long as your raid has the DPS. Mm -hmm. Curator is no longer operation. Where are the, le the legs from here, right? Yeah, the legs, Keep dude. Keep moving and you'll enter the MC Escher type the part legs of the raid. The legs are so where good. Wait, hold on. Okay, there, there we go. Now you have to fight a bunch of trash. These mana feeders Dude, here- these trash mobs are such garbage. Like, they were the worst fucking trash mobs in the whole game. Like, I hated doing this so much. Like, as a warrior, it wasn't that bad, but like, the melee- sorry, the range couldn't do anything, so you had to basically do everything, because these- these things don't take magic damage. They're gonna be really annoying because they can only take damage from physical attacks. That is that is true. These by mana the way. warps up true. here are going to explode on yeah, death, that's and true. they're also as equally as annoying. You can stun them to stop them from exploding, or you can line of sight their explosion. Mm -hmm. To get to the next boss, we need to open up the secret bookcase to fight Testicle Illhoof. Oh, I mean, t t Testicle Illhoof. Illhoof. I like ah, that. you're just in time. The ritual are about to begin. I'm gonna DPS tank the ad. He's gonna have a big imp ad next to him called yeah. Killwreck that you'll wanna kill first that way I get because more rage. he has damage taken increasing spells that he will mm -hmm. put on players. Also, when Killwreck dies, Ilhoof is Takes going to be damage, taking yeah. more damage. Speaking of imps, Ilhoof yep. will summon two portals that will constantly That's whirlwind time. Imps That's whirlwind time right there. Just have an off tank try and pick these up as best as they can. These imps are more of a nuisance than anything. 
The main ability of this fight is a random player will get sacrificed in the middle of the room, and your raid will need to deal damage to the chains to break them out. It's really so fucking easy. Like, it was so easy. I remember, did any of you guys have trouble with this boss back in the day, and your guild made you make a macro that was like slash target chains? Because I remember my guild made us all have that macro, and I told them that I had the macro, but I never actually did. I just clicked on it and I attacked it. And nobody could ever tell the difference because it didn't fucking matter. Really, really this, simple fight. This guy dropped a really uh, good trinket. And, yeah, that's it. For my life is yours. This is a joke, boss. Oh, this is a joke, boss. One. Where is it? Must be the next one. There it is. Lightning capacitor. Fool's Bane is also a really good maze for warriors, too. Look at that. It's so good. You gain an electrical charge each time you cause a damaging spell crit, and then three charges give you another lightning bolt. It is insane, man. Absolutely fucking insane. It was such a good trinket. And then, yeah, the, the, uh, the, that was the original Dick Tickler staff uh, with this uh, the Terrestrian Strangle staff. Continue forward and you'll fight Shade, Shade of Iran. Please! Yep. No more! My son, he's gone mad! Shade of Aran cannot be tanked. Aran is a mage, so he has a bunch of mage spells yep. that can be interrupted, and he will also use these on random targets. He also has a Chains of Ice spell that should be This is like the easiest boss in the game. Range DPS in your raid is should not actually be close the easiest to him because boss in the he game. has an AoE counter spell that affects players in a small radius around him. I didn't know that. He will also cast a blizzard that will do AoE damage and yep. slowly rotate around the edge of the room. Yep. Next. He has a magnetic pull where he pulls everyone in the raid towards his location, and then he'll start casting I an always wipe on this one. Shut and everyone off. in your raid just needs to run away to the edges of the room. The most yeah. important spell you should Wait, not- Wait, how much does that do again? Your raid just needs to run away to the edges of the room. Wait, it only does 3,000 damage? Who gives a fuck? Everybody's got over 10,000 health! The most important spell you should not mess up Tools is could be wrong. Players of your raid are going to have a flaming circle surround them, and if they move, the raid is going to blow up. So repeat after me. I will not move whenever Flame Wreath is cast. I will not move when Flame Wreath is cast or the raid blows up. You know? I actually think that McConnell's gonna move during Flame Wreath. And he'll he'll die and he'll wipe everybody. And it'll be because like he'll be He'll be the boss, and he'll be, like, right here, and he needs to be right here, and he'll just inch up just a little bit to try to hit the boss. Because I'll be doing more damage than them, and I'll be talking shit to him at the same time that we're doing the boss. And then he'll move up a little bit, and then he'll blow up the whole raid. Guaranteed that's gonna happen. Garen fucking teed that's gonna happen. At 40% health, he will summon four water elementals that need to be killed or banished. Lastly, if a ring gets a 20% mana, he'll do the coolest ability in this whole raid. He's gonna polymorph everyone, what? drink some water, and then pyroblast everyone for 7,000 damage. Oh my it's god, I forgot all about that! We will that. ever see this ability in 2021, because Holy hopefully shit. the boss will be dead by this point. And uh, if he isn't, you suck. At last, the nightmare is over. My guild had that happen all the time. That's how I know. That's crazy. He polymorphs, everybody sits down and drinks. I've never seen it happen. Yeah, like I haven't thought about that for 15 years. That that ring was really good and so was the neck. I had the neck back in Once the day. Once you kill the shade, you can teleport to this room by talking to the ghost guy at the entrance of the raid. When venturing to the next boss, you'll face these ethereals that you'll want to pull one at a time. When you get to this section, you can take the yeah, ramp up you. to fight Nether Spite, or go down to fight the chess event. Nether Spite was people such save a cool Nether boss. Spite for after they kill the last boss, but I'm gonna talk about him now. Why? You just kill the boss. Nether Spite has two phases. One yeah, is just called the portal the phase, and the other is called the banish phase. First, let's talk about the portal phase. When fighting Nether Spite, three portals. three portals will spawn around the room. Yep. These portals will shoot laser beams at Nether Spite, and if they hit him, they will buff him. In order to stop this, players will need to stand in front of the laser beam. While mm -hmm. standing in a laser beam, players will gain some positive but also negative effects that will increase the longer they stand in the laser. Let's break this down one laser at a time. The red laser beam will reduce the amount of damage Nether Spite takes by 1% for each second it hits him. Yep. If a player stands in the laser beam, they will have these effects. 
This laser is for the tanks in your raid. The most effective way I've seen this laser tackled is you have a tank stand in the laser for five seconds, stand back out for five seconds, and then just dance in and out. Yeah, if you lose the debuff, you gain an exhaustion debuff for like two minutes, and then you can't get it again. So it's like super important that you don't lose it. Uh, I actually, for like, I learned this fight really well because... I originally, I remember like my guild was explaining it and we spent like 40 minutes explaining it and everyone's like, do you understand? I wasn't paying attention at all. And I just ran in there and I ran through all the beams and they were mad at me. And I told a joke on vent and they laughed and they forgot about it. And we just pulled the boss again and it wasn't a big deal. Right. But like, I remember, yeah, it was, it, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I did learn it. Basically, the way it works is like the, the buff is like really strong at the beginning and then it just goes down. And so like it's like positive, negative, and it just like it inverses. And so you want to tank it as long as you can. That's pretty much the way it worked. Let's talk about the blue laser beam. The this blue increases one. Nether Spite's spell damage if it hits him. But if a player stands in it, they will have these positive damage. and negative yeah. effects. This beam is going to be soaked by casters. Have a player stand in it for around warriors. 20 what do you mean seconds or so, warriors. then move out and have another player take warriors their place. Will be tanking this beam. Another method you can do is have a warlock sit in the beam for the full duration Spamming and drain just life. spam drain life. Yeah. It's kind of scary, but it is possible. Lastly, let's talk about the green laser. If it touches Nether Spite, he's going to rapidly heal himself. Yeah. If it touches a player, they're going to have these positive That's the and worst negative one. effects. You can either have healers stand in this beam or non-mana resource users mm -hmm. like warriors or rogues. Mm -hmm. Once the effects of the beams wear off on players, they're going to get a debuff called Nether Exhaustion. Yeah, I can't this get is it again. going to stop them from being able to stand in the color beam they just stood in for a minute and a half. Other abilities oh, Nether Spite has okay. during this phase is everyone will continually take small amounts of damage all throughout the fight. I'll give he'll also fuck. spawn void zodes on the ground. Oh yeah. He'll stand in them, and he also breathes fire. During phase two of That's Nether Spite, easy. you can decide on either avoiding easy. the damage or making the fight easy. go by faster. Nether Spite is going to go into a banished state, and he will be rooted where he is standing. The only spell he will cast is Nether Breath. That deals damage and knocks players back in a cone in front of him. From what I saw in the beta, this can be kind of unpredictable and awkward, so if you want, you can play it safe and also just run over to the telescope, stand around for- I always thought this was the dumbest, like, I thought this was so stupid. The way that you just, like, you would just move away from the boss and he just wouldn't do anything. It was the the dumbest fucking mechanic. Like, the thing is, the way that you would handle it, I remember, is that you would want to be right underneath him so you could move around and get away from the, uh, the cast whenever he turns towards you. Like, that's at least what I remember doing. All of phase two, and wait for him to transition back into phase one. Since yeah. the beam touchers in the first phase might have the debuff on them, you'll need to assign new players to touch the beams. As long as you organize your raid well, and everyone understands the effects of the beams, this fight should be pretty easy. <laughs> easy. Easiest boss of my life. Dude, Spite Blade was so fucking good. Like, I remember I tried wanting to get that. Oh, the Uni Mine Headdress. This was actually fucking amazing. Look at that. Look at those stats. Spell hit, critical strike, and also damage. Nuts. Like, this is why you want to kill this boss. Yeah, TBC raids were a lot better. This was, yeah, there's shoulders. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I could give right. you a detailed guide on the chess event. No, please but don't. that would be like giving you an analytical, in-depth guide on a Mario Party minigame. Okay, look, just kill the king, uh, medieval cheat, and spawn fire on the board and stuff. Move out of it. Seriously, man, it's just really, really easy, and it's just a good bit of fun. We actually couldn't do it. Like, I remember my guild wiped on it a couple of times. And we're like, all right, guys, look, let's just, look, everybody's tired. It's, oh, man, like, oh, bro, like, oh, let's just come back tomorrow, man. I just, I can't figure, oh, they were so bad, man. It was awful. Oh, yeah, the neck. I had the necklace, too. I think I got the boots, but no, they were like trash boots that you could get, like they had dodge on them. I think I got those instead. I forgot which one I had, though. It was a long time ago. The shield looked really cool. The Triptych Shield of the Ancients. It was like a recolor of the Gladiator when one. When heading to the last boss, you'll face these flesh beasts that can do pretty chunky damage. These do more damage than the bosses do. And you them carefully into the chest room. And with every other boss dead, it's time to face the Master of Karazhan. 
Madness has brought you here to me. I shall be your undoing. Prince Malchazar is a cool fight that can mm -hmm. be cheesed beyond oblivion. During phase yep. one, he's going to summon these infernals. They will spawn all over They're the like platform. They're like an enraged. Hellfire. But what you're going to do is hold Prince right here and have your ranged stay right here. On the the two places where these infernals do not spawn, so you can ignore this mechanic entirely. Next, he will cast Shadow Nova, which is a... Sp I actually think they should change that. Like, they should change that. Like, I, I don't like safe spotting. Safe spotting bosses is just... It's trash gameplay. Uh, it, it, it's just... It's trash gameplay. Like, just change it. Spell that takes two seconds to cast, and once it's casted, it will knock players back in melee range. So you don't want to get knocked in fire. Your back against the wall in melee DPS. No changes. Sight the ability right here. Next, you cast feeble that affects five players, and it will reduce their health That's to like phase one two. hit point yeah. for seven seconds. It's very scary, but as long as you don't get hit by anything, it won't affect you at all. Mm -hmm. Finally, he will cast Shadowward Pain on targets that needs to be dispelled. During phase two, it's pretty much like phase one, but he doesn't use Shadow Word Pain, but he's gonna deal a bunch of damage that's to your whenever, tank. That's whenever, because he pulls out two weapons, and that's whenever you start blocking everything, of course. And uh, yeah, he does a ton of damage in the last phase. I, I do want to say, though, uh, the reason why I think that they should do stuff like that is that, like, TBC is already gonna be easy. Like, we we we've seen videos already of people in blues just dumpstering Karazhan. There should be a degree of, like, the boss's intended design. And, like, the intended design should matter. And I think that if there's, like, a way to glitch out a boss or bug out a boss or something like that, uh, I do think that should be fixed. Because it just makes the game... It, it makes the boss less fun. Uh, it changes the way... Because, like, the the idea of Malchazar, right? It was like, we didn't do this back in the day because we were stupid. We didn't know this was a strategy. Um, is that phase two, I think, was until 70%. And you would have to damage him down. And you would dynamically have to change where in the room you were going to be based off of where the infernals would spawn. And if you kill them too slow, you'd have too many infernals. And that was really cool. Like, I, I, I wish that's what that was what happened, man. It'd be great. No changes. Uh, the thing is, it's not a change, though. The change is the uh, the dysfunctional behavior. It's, so yeah, it's a, it's a bug fix. spam their heals. During phase three, his tank damage will not be as strong, and he will it, summon it's a fix, not a change. that hit random members of your raid and cannot be targeted. You kind of just have to deal with axes hitting your face. Yeah. He will cast Amplify Magic on a random member of the raid. That's just going to increase the amount of damage they take. I didn't and, know um... Huh. And he dies. Yeah, that's pretty much the fight. Like I said, you can cheese it pretty hard. Yeah. So, hey, congrats. I Easy. I refuse to concede defeat. I am a prince of the Eridar. I am dead. Ow. Dude, the decapitator was actually such a great weapon. The reason why warriors wanted to have the decapitator is so they could pull and have a lot of threat at the beginning of the pull. So I remember using that and getting the weapon just so I could have better pull aggro. And then I got the ring of a thousand marks too because of how fucking insanely good it was. And the bow was really great. Like this is the wep this is the weapon boss, right? Like look at this. Whenever dude that I I still remember whenever I got Gorehal, man. Like it was just such a good day, man. It was such a good fucking day. I was so happy. And then the Nathrazine Mind Blade was just completely fucking insane. Like I think I even got the cloak. Like I had like ever this cloak is green, I believe, and it has like the uh it's like the snake skin on it or something like that. Uh I remember I had that one too. It gave you 36 stam. That's a big dick cloak. Yeah, some of these items were insane, and then the dagger was really good, Thanks too. for joining me. If you take all this information, you will be well on your way to clearing Karazhan in no time. Yeah. Do me a favor, and if you found this guide helpful at all, link it to your guildmates, so they we're can get in the educated. Same, we're all in the same guild now. with the power of teamwork, you can defeat yeah, the bosses in the, Karazhan the for real. No. The bow's bisque till Sunwell? Me. I didn't I have I a didn't ball know that. party to attend. Ready for action. Alright, that's really- that's- that's- Okay, that's really good. Yeah, this is actually, this is a jammer. You're right. Karazhan is gonna be lit. You're right, man. This raid is as good as Old War, 
this raid, I, I feel like there were a lot of great raids in BC. Like, in my opinion, like, tier 6 sucked. I I'll say it again, like, I know people don't want to hear that. I know people love tier 6 because of Illidan. Man, most of the fights in tier 6 were bad. Like, most of them were bad. Uh, tier 5 was incredible. Uh, tier 4, Karazhan was great. BT was awesome. No, it wasn't. That's spoken to... I really want to see somebody who says Black Temple is awesome after they finish clearing the trash from Shade of Akama to Terran Gorfine. I want to be like, okay, you finally got to the boss. How do you feel about the raid? And I, I want to have a conversation with that person. Because I guarantee nobody fucking did that. And then, oh, we finally killed fucking uh, Terran? All right, walk all the way back and then go into the other way. And now you've got to go over to Reliquary. It was insane. It was so fucking bad, man.